Praise Shalom. It's Brother Azam Wath once again, another lesson. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakadash. That's all praise to the Heavenly Father and Son's name, who the world Italy calls Jesus Christ. Real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. I also give praise and glory to the Holy Spirit as well, which is the force and entity that makes this edification possible. I want to say Shalom to all you since your heart and Akim Alpha. It's making your body a living sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked generation. I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles, GMS, who's taught this truth and who rule well. So this morning, I just want to, um, you know, of course, land back off of the video uh, that uh, me and Brother Dawa Allah, you know, did last night uh, concerning basically preparing your mind, you know, um, you know, for these days that are at hand. Because the days that we're living in, uh, we're in the beginning phases or the beginning days of uh, the days of vengeance that our Lord Yahweh Shah told us you know, that was going to come and certain things is going to come along with it, all right, such as, you know, famines, plagues, pestilences, you know, great insurrections, mass death, you know, Esau having full, con <laughs> well, it seems like full control, which we know he doesn't have full control, but to, to, to an average individual, it would feel that way, all right, but we got to remember that the Lord, this is the Lord's movement, the Lord created Esau, the Lord created food, the Lord created water, the Lord created air, all right, and we have to remember this, right? To and this is these are all the things to help us keep our minds aright, man. All right, don't lose the big picture. All right, so Lord controlling everything. So this is Luke chapter twenty one, verse twenty two, and he says, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna start right here at verse twenty. All right, because all of this that ha this happened, you know, uh, around seventy A D, you know, with the siege the siege of Jerusalem. Right when our land uh, and our people, you know, became siege and they killed two thirds of our people within the city, and one third fled into the interiors of Africa, you know, which is how we, you know, eventually got over there. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, according to Ecclesiastes one and eight. The thing that has been done is that which shall be done again. All right, so Earth is pretty much a it's a it's a recycling phase. You know, history repeats itself. If you want to know more about prophecy, look at history, all right? Wisdom Solomon 8 and 8 tells you the same thing as well. But nonetheless, uh, Luke 21 and 20, and this is how I shall speak. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, all right, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Now, let's go into this word compassed, all right? Compassed. Ooh, to go around, lead around of person standing around and compass of besiegers see that besiegers and last night the spirit was on me to look up this definition of siege and what is the definition of a siege a military operation in which enemy forces surround a town or building cutting off essential supplies and what's going on right now your essential supplies you know your food your water you know, things that, that help you function every day is being cut off from you intentionally. It's not like they don't have the supplies, you know. <laughs> your chicken wings getting cut off. Your bundles getting cut off. You about to have a lot of bald-headed women walking around here. You can't hide that, you can't hide that bald head no more, all right? <laughs> and it says an operation in which a police or other force surrounds a building and cut off supplies with the aim of forcing an armed person to surrender. This whole thing is, is causing you, is in, in efforts, great efforts, might I add, to make Jake surrender to the image and the market, uh, and MOTB, all right? Choosing, you, it, the, long, the, the line is being drawn in the sand, all right? Yahweh Shah says that no man can serve two masters, either he would hate the one and love the other, or vice versa, all right? And so this siege here, right, <laughs> is going into this article that we read about last night. And U.S. Treasury Deputy Secretary warns unjust Americans that shortages will continue until everyone's jabbed. And I'm going to keep bringing this article out, man, right, because our people do not understand what the hell is going on, right? And it's our job as watchmen, right, to, uh, to prepare our people and to warn our people for what's to come. This is Proverbs chapter 27. So like it may be 28. Yep, Proverbs 28 and verse five. 
And this sums up Jake in a nutshell. Proverbs 28 and 5, evil men understand not judgment. See, our people are evil, so they don't understand the judgments that's going on. They don't understand why chicken wings are being shortage. <laughs> you know, they don't understand why these, you know, why these particular uh, scourges of amendments are taking place. They don't even know that it's scourges. All right, because our people have, uh, they have more hope in Babylon than, 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 Amer than these white Americans do and these Edomites do, man. All right, because they're just simply evil. It says, evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek Yahweh understandeth all things. Yeah, we understand well what's going on over here, man. All right, it's not going to catch us as a thief in the night, man. That's why Yahweh shot commanded us in Luke chapter 12, right, to, uh, to stay up on our watch and to see, you know, what's going on. Let me get that in Luke 12 real quick. This is Luke 12, verse uh, 36. I'm going to start at verse 35. He says, <clears throat> let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. It says, and be, so like and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. See that? And this is why we're willing, you know, the Lord does not take the spirit of watching or the spirit of prophecy off of us, man, because we want to be prepared for when your house shall come. Because those that is not prepared, he's going to come <laughs> in a rude awakening manner. He says, very last say unto you that he shall gird himself, all right, and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Now let's go back to Luke 21, all right? It says, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. And this man has a plan. When I say this man, I'm talking about so-called white man, you know, uh, the nation of Edom, you know, particularly these elites and their cohorts, they have a plan and an agenda that is already underway to starve you out, right? That's what siege goes into. And this reminds me of the book of Revelation 6 and 9. 6 and 9. So like it's six and eight, this is the fourth seal, which has already happened, right? But you still have, um, you know, this, this man, the Edomite, still ruling the reigner, and he still uses the same tactics that he did in the past, right? And this is some of his tactics. This is Revelation 6 and 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, right? And this is speaking about Esau, man. Now, of course, he's not sitting on an actual horse and his name is death. No, this is all symbolic. A horse represents power. And this man has received power from Yahweh Bashmah Shah to rule the world in this dispensation of time. And how does scripture say he's going to rule the world? With death. It says, and hell followed him. And power was given unto them. See that? So power was given unto this man. I'm going to show that this the Lord's moving. Now, let me get this. Because this man could not have received power if it had not been of the Lord. This is John 3 and 27. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing. See that? A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. So the Lord gave this man this power to rule in this hour of darkness for a particular reason, to purge out you rebels, All right? Because it's already written that the elect will have full victory over the beast, over his name, over his image, over his mark, All right? So all this hour of temptation is really for the wicked doers, man. Just like Elder Yashua was going into early. It says, and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. Uh-oh. All right. What's the fourth part of the earth? Google it. Research it. It's America. All right. <laughs> to kill with sword. Right, which this man has obviously done with hunger, which is what he's done and what he's doing again. This man is besieging, he's killing, he has a plan to starve you people out, man. To kill with sword, with hunger, and with death, and with and with the beast of the earth. This man's about to unleash different types of creatures to uh to uh 
to lay you even with the ground. I'm going to get this in the NLT. It brings it even more to life. It says, I looked up and saw a horse whose color was pale green. His rider was named Death, and his companion was the grave. These two were given authority over one-fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, famine, and disease, and wild animals. This is everything that Esau is using right now, man. Going to further prove to you that this is Esau that's on this horse, man, right? To kill the sword and famine and disease. And what disease do you know that he's killing people with right now? You know, I don't have to say it. You sure already know it. You've been living the same word I've been living in for the past two years, man, right? And now this man's about to starve you out. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, he's going to unleash all different types of mechanisms of death, man. He's got mechanical dogs ready, right? What do you think they're going to do with it, with those beasts in the, in the zoos? They're going to let them loose. You got lions and tigers and, you know, bears and, you know, all different types of animals in the, in the zoo. And guess what? They're going to sick them after you, man. So these are the days that we're living in. Luke 21 and 22, 21. And when you shall see Jerusalem put compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Basically, it's time for us to be pilgrims once again, man. All right? This is not the place to where you, you know, have a mindset of furthering your roots, you know, balling out until the kingdom comes. No, that's not how this works, man. All right? <laughs> if you want to ball out till the kingdom comes, Yahweh Shah says you've already received your consolation, man, on this side. So what you looking for the, you know, you can't get your cake and eat it, man. Right, you're commanded to become a pilgrim. Right, there are certain things that you got to cut off, man. Certain things that you know that you want to do, but you cannot do because you need to begin your spirit right. And don't think that you can do both at the same time. Do what the hell you want to do and get your spirit right. No, this is a sacrifice, man. These sincere brothers who came into this thing, we have given up things, given up things and, and money, you know, particular people in our lives, just to gain your high shot. Paul said the same thing. I count all things as done just to win the or gain the excellencies of the knowledge of Yahweh Shah. Paul had it made, man. He had the seat of authority, you know. Sure, he had good money, but he left it all, man. So we don't have that mindset of furthering our roots here in Babylon the Great, which we already see is about to be destroyed, right? <laughs> what good does it do you to have your credit, you know, get your credit right? You know, work so hard to get your credit right. You got your, you know, stack of bread, you know, your savings account. And then the next month, it's another lockdown. <laughs> and now you don't waste all that time you could have used to prepare your spirit, man. So he says, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and were pilgrims. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them, and it, I can already hear it now, man. There's some people that say, man, this nigga, you know, he just, you know, he's just a party pooper, man. Well, it's scriptures. It's scripture. Let me get this in second Ezra. As a matter of fact, I want to get in GNT. Why are you trying to live delicately here, man? Let me get this in GNT. Second Ezra 16 and GNT. I'm going to start right here, verse 40. He says, listen to my message, my people, and get ready for the battle. When the disasters come, see that? When the disasters come, and they are already here, man, All right? You must live as people whose home is not in this world. Merchants must not expect to make a profit from what they sell. They must be ready to run for their lives. Their customers must expect to lose whatever they buy. Whoever builds a house should not plan to live in it. Now, is this me saying this or scripture? Is this me trying to write in your parade or is it scripture? It says, farmers should not expect to harvest their crops or pick their grapes. Those who marry must not expect to have children. And those who don't marry must live as if they have been widowed. Anything, see that? Anything that is done will be useless. So whatever you plan on doing here in Babylon the Great right now, it's useless, man. This is scripture. It says foreigners will harvest the crops. Yeah, they're going to bring foreign, they're going to bring these UN troops over here really soon. 
I just got an uh, update on my phone. All right. As a matter of fact, I, I got to pull it up right here. Yeah, look right here. It says the ongoing supply chain crisis just reached a new level. And Biden is considering dispatching the National Guard for help. And eventually the National Guard is going to be moved out the way just for the U.N. troops. You know, the United Nations troops, you're going to have these Russian, you know, motherfuckers and, you know, Chinese and all these conglomerates. They're going to come over here and have no pity upon you Americans, first and foremost, because they don't know you. They don't speak your language. You're going to be pleading and crying out for help. And they think that you're cursing them out. They're going to be, man, <laughs> these people are going to be filled with the vengeance of the Lord, man. All right. So he says, foreigners will harvest your crops. The seeds will, this uh, see, they, they will seize the wealth. So they're going to take away your wealth. They're going to tear down the houses and carry off the children as slaves. Yeah, they're going to take your children to FEMA camps, man. Anyone who has children will be bringing them up to be slaves or to die of starvation. <laughs> is this me saying it or scriptures? See, this is the type of mindset that you got to start preparing yourself for, man. Now, of course, you know, you brothers and sisters that's in this truth and sincerity, we, we have faith that the Lord is going to, you know, help our children. He's going to, you know, fare the, uh, fare the best for our children, you know? But especially for those, man, the, the, the wicked of our people who have kids, got these newborns. Hey, man, what is scripture saying? Anyone who has children will be bringing them up to be slaves or to die of starvation, man. Anyone who makes money will do so only to see it violently taken away. <laughs> Says the more possessions people gather, the more they spend on their cities and houses the more attention they give to their personal appearance, the more angry the Lord will become with them because of their sin. Come on, man. Come on. So this is always the time to be throwing things away, not gathering things into yourself, man. Now, once again, as we all know, of course, you got to make a living. Of course, you got to eat, right? But we do these things as a basis just to, just to see us through until the next day, man. All right, we use, like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 7, we use the world, but don't abuse it, man. All right, and it takes a wise mindset to think in such a fashion. So let's go back, Luke 21 and 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So all those prophecies that we read about in the so-called Old Testament and even New Testament, Revelation and things like that, all these dark prophecies that talks about death and famine and plague. And, well, guess what? We're in those days now, man. And it's here. Even people who don't read the Bible can see that the world has just shifted into a shift for the worse. All right? So there's only one thing that you can do, must do, and should do in these times. It's repent. It's repent and prepare your mind for what's to come. Now, let me uh, grab this in Ezekiel real quick. Ezekiel 21. All right, and once again, we got to go through these things in order to get to the kingdom, man. In order to get to the kingdom, you have to go through these things. All right, this is the whole point of salvation. Salvation is synonymous with destruction. All right, you need destruction in order for you to be put in a position to be saved out of it. All right, and this is the, the way that the Lord is going to show his power and his might. The Lord's about to reun, he's about to remind humanity of who made everything. <laughs> he's about to remind humanity of who's the one, of who's the reason why you see the Grand Canyon form. All right, it was a great flood. See, it's the Lord, man. See, the Lord was playing it cool all these years, letting people get fat, you know, letting people live their life in luxury, you know, to where the point today, where they forgot about the Lord, man. See, the Lord just wants to remind you in a very harsh and abrupt manner so you can never forget it. All right, because in the kingdom, everybody's going to know the Lord, man. <laughs> Everybody, from the least to the greatest. Especially us, uh, uh, us Israelites, and it's our job to teach the other nations, according to Isaiah 2, Jeremiah 31. So, but nonetheless, anyway, 
It's like Ezekiel 21 and uh, verse, I'm going to start right here in verse <clears throat> 1. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem, Jerusalem and drop thy word toward the holy places and prophesy against the land of Israel. And we're prophesying against the two-thirds of our people. And say to the land of Israel, thus saith Yahweh, behold, I am against thee. See, the Lord is still against most of Israel right now. And just because you know you're Israelite does not mean that he's for you. Right? Because as you read in Daniel 12, right, in the spirit, uh, he says, some shall awake to everlasting uh, uh, life and some shall awake to, um, to damnation. So the Lord could have awakened you to the fact that you're Israelite just so you can know why you're about to be damned, why you're about to be judged. All right, so this is all the more reason why you need to be examining yourself in these last few minutes, these last few seconds. Right? I said, Behold, I'm against thee and will draw forth my sword out of his sheath. And who's the Lord's sword? Esau, man. Genesis 27. Esau's about to be drawn out of his sheath. See, the Lord put a dormant spirit upon Esau for the past few years, man. You know? These little murders that you hear about, you know, a nigga getting shot in the street. Man, that's nothing. That's nothing, man. Our people over there marching for stuff like, man, listen, Esau's about to remind you who he is too, man. Christopher Columbus, he spoke about how he couldn't put his sword down. His hand literally got fashioned and formed into the shape of his sword. History books has it written, man. This man could, literally could not put his sword down. <laughs> And the Lord is about to put this, he's about to arouse that spirit back in uh, Esau, man. It says, and I will draw forth my sword out of his sheath and will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. So the Lord is separating, man. It says, seeing then that I will cut off thee the righteous and the wicked, therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheath against all flesh. Esau is about to come down upon everybody, man. It's his kingdom right now says, upon all flesh from the south to the north, that all flesh may know that I, Yahweh, had drawn forth my sword out of his sheath. It shall not return anymore. Meaning the Lord ain't putting this up, man. Once Esau pulls Esau, I mean, it's a lot here. Once the Lord pulls Esau out of the, out of the sheath, he's not putting him back up. All right, it's going to have to be Yahweh Shah to bring this man down. Uh, let me skip down here to verse... Um, Verse uh, 8, again, the word Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, thus say Yahweh, say, a sword, a sword is sharpened and also is furbished. And in the spirit, man, we, hey, we know that Esau has been sharpening up his sword, man. <laughs> See, all these years, Jake just been playing around, not taking heed to the, to the word. Jake's out there still getting drunk, high, partying. Got a blunt and a chicken wing at his mouth at the same time. The same time, Esau's been sharpening up his sword. He's at the height of his military strength. He even got his little kids out there in the woods practicing, you know, with guns. Man, this sword is sharpened, man. And now look at you, Jake's finished. You ain't even started the war yet, man. You don't even know it's a war going on. You don't even know you're about to be starved out. But you, you, you'll quickly see, man. Verse 10, it is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. See that? It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? So scripture is saying, should you make mirth seeing that a sword is sharpened, man? Is this the time for you to be living your life, you know, <laughs> like it's like it ain't, you know, like it's not about to end? Right? Now for the elect, there, there will be some of the elect that's, that's not going to taste death. Yahweh Shah says that in Matthew chapter 12. All right, so it says, uh, should we then make mirth? It contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. And he that given it, given it, it to be furbished, that it may be handled. The sword is sharper and is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. And who's the slayer? You can read that in Genesis chapter 27. Once again, Esau says, let me get that. Genesis, uh, 27 and verse 41. And he says, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing there wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand 
then will I slay my brother Jacob. Now we know that the actual man Esau did not slay the actual man Jacob, right? So when is this going to be fulfilled? In these days of vengeance, man, right? So what type of mindset should you be, you know, uh, uh, promoting, right? Should you be uh, making mirth, seeing that a, a sword is furbished, right? But nonetheless, you know, I, I had more precepts, but, you know, I'm going to end it off here and Lord willing, I'll do another lesson tonight, you know, because um, I really want to touch to, you know, us having faith during this time of uh, a famine, you know, it's going to take a lot of faith, man. But nonetheless, you know, I hope you brothers and sisters are edified. You know, until next time, DTA, a Baba Ball, Shalom.